if we've got a particle or something we're modeling as a particle, we could imagine dropping it from a height, just like literally letting go, or we could throw it up and then it will go up and down. Or we could stand on a tower and then throw it up. So throw it up from a height and then watch it go up and then see it go down past where I just threw it from and then further down. Or I could throw it down from a height. So I could, I could stand on top of a tower and chuck it downwards. And I could also throw it at an angle. So instead of throwing it directly up in the air, I could throw it across to my friend who's over there. And that's something that we'll look at later. That's projectile motion. But at the moment, we're just talking about literally throwing it up in the air and then it falling back down again. Now, why is it falling back down? There is a force acting on it. It's accelerating. There is only one force acting on it. As soon as it leaves your hand, there is only one force acting on the particle. And that is the force of gravity. So the acceleration is literally just g. The acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity and that is the letter g is what we use and it's 9.81 meters per second squared. Now this does assume two things. It assumes that gravity is constant on the surface of the earth which isn't strictly speaking true. The further away we are from the center of the earth the smaller the effect of gravity is. So it's not strictly speaking true that if I climb to a tower the gravity will be exactly the same, but we're using a modeling assumption that it is exactly the same because it's similar enough not to affect the results of our, of our calculations. And what else does it assume? Oh, it also assumes that terminal velocity is not reached. So we are going to assume that the whole time that the, that the particle is falling, it is getting faster and faster and faster and faster. There is actually in reality a maximum speed that it can reach terminal velocity, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to assume that it's not falling for long enough to reach terminal velocity. So it does keep accelerating at 9.81 meters per second per second. We're going to need our SUVAT equations, and these five equations are true for any particle moving with constant acceleration. So, for example, something falling under gravity, going up or down, it's still falling under gravity. This equation here has got no, uh, what's it got? VU, VUAT, no S in it, no displacement. So if we're not interested in displacement, that's the letter S, we can use this equation. This equation has got no U, U is the initial velocity. So it's got no initial velocity. If we don't know and don't care, then we'd use that equation. This one's got no V, V is final velocity. So if we're not interested in the final velocity, then and we don't know it, we would use this equation. This equation has got no A in it, which is the acceleration. And this equation has got no T in it, which is the time. It's important to use SI units here. This is one of the things to check when you're looking at the question. SI units. So our displacement, S, has to be measured in metres. Our initial velocity in metres per second. Our final velocity in metres per second. Our acceleration in metres per second per second. And our time in seconds. Okay. Now, these four are all vectors. What does that mean? It means they've got a direction as well as a magnitude. So you have to think, and this is the most important thing in SUVAT, think plus or minus for all of these four. We have to choose a direction to be plus. That's totally up to you. And then you have to stick to it. You have to think carefully about those four. Are they going to be positive or negative? And if you do that, then not a lot can go wrong. So let's have a look at this question here. We've got a ball being dropped from a tower and it's just being dropped. So it's being held out and then off it goes down like that. Then we've got another piece of information. We're told that had it not just been dropped, had it been chucked up in the air and had a different journey, this journey, before it lands at the bottom on the earth, then it would take two seconds longer to get to the bottom. This height of this tower or whatever it is, is H apparently, H meters. And so I'm gonna form my SUVAT table and then choose a SUVAT equation. And I know I can use SUVAT tables and SUVAT equations because I've got constant acceleration because the particle is just moving under gravity. There's no other forces on the particle at all. Okay, let's think what we've got going on here. I don't know how long it takes to fall to the ground, 
but I do know it's relevant and I do know that if I'd thrown it up in the air, it would take two seconds longer. I definitely know acceleration. Acceleration is going to be gravity, 9.81, but A is one of my four things that I have to think about very, very carefully. So I need to decide now which way I want to be up and which way I want to be down. Now, acceleration acts downward, so I might choose down to be positive, but, and also H, if I'm measuring from here downwards, then I'll get a positive value of H if I face in that direction downwards. So I'm going to take down to be positive. And that is very, 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 very important. Okay, so 9.81 should be positive because that's the direction that it goes in. Displacement. If I start here and that's positive and I measure down here, I will get H meters in both situations. The initial velocity here is zero because I just dropped it. The initial velocity here is 16, but is it positive or negative? We need to really carefully think plus or minus with all of these four whenever you're doing any CVATs. Okay, so I'm throwing it up. Down is positive, so it's minus 16. Now, we don't care about V. No one cares what speed it's going when it lands. No one's interested. They haven't told us. They haven't asked either. So we can use the equations without V. S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Always write down the equation before you use it. You um, can pick up extra marks for doing that, or rather you could in certain circumstances drop marks if you don't do it. Right, let's sub in. The displacement is H. The initial velocity is zero. T is T. A is 9.81 and T is T. Here, S is H, U is minus 16, T is T plus 2, and A is 9.81, and T is T plus 2. Right, two equations, simultaneous equations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, this already says H equals, this, this is no T's, not OT, no T's, basically nothing. So I'm going to put this H equal to this H, so a half... 9.81t squared, that's h, is equal to minus 16t plus 2 plus a half 9.81 and then t plus 2 squared. There. Okay, so on this side I've got a half times 9.81 times t squared and on this side I've got a half times 9.81 times t squared. So they're going to cancel and I can put this 16t plus 2 on the other side to make it positive. And then we get a half times 9.81 times 4t. So all together, that is going to be 0.5 times 9.81 times 4, 19.62. So I'm going to get 19.62t. And then I'm also going to have four lots of this, which is 19.62. Okay, so if we put t's on this side of the equation, I've got 19.62 minus 16 t's is 3.62. And then on this side of the equation, I've got 32 minus 19.62, which is 12.38. So dividing that under there, I get t equals 12.38 divided by 3.62, which is 3.42. Now I'm not actually going to round this because this isn't what I'm after, I'm after H. So don't round, don't prematurely round. There's no need. T is not what we were after. So I'm gonna use 41988 blah, blah, blah. Okay, now what I actually wanted was H and this equation here links H with T. So I need to square it and times it by half of 9.81. And I've got that whole value in my calculator there. I'm going to square it. That's t squared times half of 9.81. 57.36 metres or to three significant figures, 57.4 metres.